Now I will explain the example of HOSVD for microseismic data. Uh, this is a continuation of the previous video. This is the big idea of my example of microseismic supercompression, where we are going to first use microseismic data acquired and recorded by uh, the receivers here. Then uh, we're going to transform it into a tensor form, in this case uh, a 3D structure tensor and then uh, apply HOSVD to reduce the size of data. Um, here in the figure, we can observe the original form and the recovered one. Something to keep in mind is that the data sets can be extremely large depending on factors such as the number of locations and recording time. Hence, a reduction of the data is highly useful if you need to work with this kind of data. Now I'm going to explain uh, the supercompression of the data. Uh, first, the original microseismic data was converted and stored in a third order tensor, where each mode uh, of this tensor represents the seismic events time here, the uh, receiver's location, and finally the event locations. Uh, one important thing uh, to mention is that I'm going to show the MATLAB code of um, HOSVD in order to, to give you some comments related to that. The methodology applied uh, to the microseismic data is presented as first uh, the ST HOSVD application, the sequentially truncated HOSVD. Uh, this was applied because this is basically how I mentioned before in the previous video, this is an improvement of the HOSVD, where the super compression ratio was estimated uh, using this equation that you can see here. And by applying the STHOSVD, the original tensor was reduced a 75%, and the number of variables decreased significantly. Uh, you can see here the differences um, in the reduction of variables. Uh, the normalizing of values were determined in order to observe the variability of each mode. And how I mentioned before, uh, this was estimated by applying the Frobenius norms on the core tensor uh, of my HOSVD. The reconstruction of my original tensor is displayed in this figure using a tolerance of 0 0.0002. Um, additionally, uh, the reconstruction associated with the X component can be observed here on the right side, um, where we can clearly observe the negligible error and similitude associated uh, with it. And so we notice that they are basically almost the same. So now I'm going to explain the analysis between the recover and original data. And it can be expanded by applying different relative errors in the STHOSVD. It can be observed the relationship between the original data and the compression ratio at different relative errors. So it can be observed um, on these figures that with a higher tolerance, we obtain a higher compression ratio. However, we notice that uh, we are actually missing important information from our original data. So here with a, a smaller tolerance, we notice that some uh, characteristics and some important information is showing. And then uh, with a even smaller tolerance, we are basically seeing some uh, characteristics and important information of the original. And then here we basically have almost the same. Um, and the one that displays uh, the more accurate representation of the original tensor is basically this one. Uh, that is the one that I previously uh, showed uh, with a compression ratio of 75%. So it is important to, to understand the fact that there's, there needs to be a balance between how much do you compress your data um, because you can lose important information from your original. Finally, these are the references that I use uh, for my presentation. Um, some of them I previously gave in the first uh, video. 
the microseismic example that I gave, uh, it's mainly from this paper called A Novel Approach to Discovery of Hidden Structures in Microseismic Data Using Machine Learning Techniques. So if you want to practice um, or want to replicate a little bit the idea, you can come here. Um, so next, I'm going to show you the MATLAB code that I developed um, just to show you a little bit how the code works. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the MATLAB code uh, for my microseismic data that I previously uh, show in the PPT slides. Um, so this is the code. Uh, first, uh, I basically load the data. This is the data that I load. And then I convert it here into a tensor. Then I establish the tolerance, how I previously explained. You need, you can um, establish the tolerance for your HOSVD. Uh, this is the HOSVD. Uh, you can find this code and this function on the uh, tensor toolbox that I explained in the first video. Um, this is, I did this for 10 rounds only. Uh, it's important to mention that I did sequentially truncated uh, just because how I mentioned before, uh, this is just an improvement of the HOSVD. Um, here, uh, these are the uh, factor matrices and core tensor. Uh, I just displayed, displayed in this way just to show you. Uh, so this is the core and this is the factor matrices. Uh, this is the compression ratio that you can see here, uh, the same equation of the PPT slides, and then I calculated the singular values, uh, or basically the Frobenius norms, uh, using this equa the equation of the first uh, video. And then I just arranged them in a, just in a whole structure. Um, and then I just plotted, so then uh, let's run it. Um, because like that you can see the process. Uh, so basically it's going to compute the HOSVD. This is the size of the core that uh, best applied to the um, epsilon, to the tolerance factor. Uh, and this is the relative error associated with it. So here we can know that, is, uh, that it can actually calculate uh, the core tensor. Uh, so these are just some of the uh, plots that I showed you before, the number of variables, the reconstruction, and the normalized singular values. Um, so now I'm going to show you guys uh, the differences if we choose a different uh, tolerance. So let me put here a different tolerance, uh, maybe this one. Um, to, to also show the reconstruction of the only X component, I'm going to put here B. Uh, and then uh, let's run it to see um, that difference if you use a different tolerance. Uh, so here you can see that the core tensor is, has uh, lower dimensions, and that's because we are compressing our data uh, way more. Uh, so let's see. So here you can see in the number of variables that of course the compression is really high, 96%. And this is a little bit the image of the reconstruction um, of my data. So you can notice that uh, we are missing a lot of information. So even though we did compress our data 96%, uh, we are still uh, losing important and valuable information. So we can play a little bit more and use, I don't know, just put another zero here. And uh, let me show you just the process. It's taking a while. Um, I forgot to mention that uh, it, can, it also shows you the elapsed time, how much time uh, time does it take? Uh, and here you can notice that uh, the size of the core is different. It's a little bit higher than the previous one. Okay, so here in this figure, uh, how you notice with uh, 
uh, smaller tolerance, we can observe some of the um, main characteristics of the original recover. However, you know, we are still probably missing some uh, important uh, characteristics or values of this uh, recovered data. So again, we can do this again uh, using uh, another tolerance. This is my, I think that this was my original one. So let's see. Yes, um, so of course the size of the core is higher. And then um, let's see uh, where is the difference in the recover and original data. So yeah, the elapsed time is a little bit higher in this case. And uh, here we notice that since like the recover and original data, uh, they are almost the same. Um, so it seems that it worked, it worked very good. And yeah, we obtained 75% of compression. So how I mentioned before, we need to have a balance of how much do we actually can compress our data. So thank you so much. Um, if you have any question, uh, just let me know.